The history of human progress, like the development of the Earth's biosphere, has demonstrated a steady increase in what Lyndon LaRouche has termed energy flux density. The margin of difference between the energy flux density requirements of the system as a whole and the actual energy flux density expressed by given living organisms and human societies is the determining factor in all extinction events of both living organisms and human societies. Far from the far-fetched lie of a second law of thermodynamics, the universe is moving toward ever higher states of organization, expressed in the constantly increasing requirements of energy flux density with the development of the galaxy and of larger systems as a whole. Plant and animal species, as notably with the PT and KT extinctions, have routinely been faced with this challenge to upgrade or go extinct. 250 million years ago, in the Permian-Triassic, or PT extinction, 96% of all marine species were wiped out, as well as 70% of land species. The Cretaceous-Tertiary, or KT extinction, 60 million years ago, marked the extinction of the energy-inefficient dinosaurs, to be replaced by mammals. Both of these systems were replaced in their turn with higher forms of life. When the system requirements changed, the prior species went extinct. The next platform of life, which had been waiting in the wings, with a point of incidence much earlier in the process, then takes over as the predominant system, for about as long as it maintains the requirements of the, again, ever-evolving requirements for survival. There is no standing still. Only human evolution is unique in this process, as human society contains within itself the option to willfully self-develop. Unlike animal species, which cannot willfully transform themselves to rise to what the next upshift requires of them, and oligarchical systems, which are intentionally committed to a policy of no technological development and no progress, as with the Green Movement and the British monarchy's present drive for population reduction. A humanist society will transform itself willfully to stay ahead of the curve by focusing itself on spearhead economic missions, those which will increase its energy flux density. In effect, the improvements in the human system will increase the rate of development of biological systems as well. This has already taken place in the form of advancements in agriculture and the response of bacteria and viruses to advancements in the field of medicine. Weather modification through irrigation and large-scale water projects directly alters entire ecological cycles. Often, this process is misunderstood, as when one misses the forest for the trees. Viewed merely from within a given system, one which is not evolving to meet the changing baseline requirements of the system as a whole, a given fixed platform of development takes on the appearance of a simple rise and fall. The British lie of cyclical rise and fall of civilization is merely taking advantage of a cultural failure, the persistent habit of looking at processes from the bottom up, rather than from the top down. Taken from the top, this process is, rather, an expression of the anti-entropic development of the universe. Looking at the recent case in Russia, we can see what happens when you don't stay ahead of the curve. 